All right, so you've decided to get a rabbit. Now you've got the rabbit coming home. What do you do? Rabbits on average live about 10 to 12 years if they are kept inside and properly cared for. Unfortunately, rabbits that live outside in hutches or loose in backyards usually average about one to three years. And that's for a variety of reasons. Um, some of those reasons are, of course, that other animals can attack them and kill them. Rabbits that live in hutches, if they are scared, um, they don't really have any place to hide or get away from an animal that might be jumping up to get them. So they literally can have heart attacks and die that way. They are also more prone to diseases, ticks, fleas, etc. Weather can affect their health tremendously. Um, if they're too warm, they literally can die of heat stroke. So it's extremely important, we feel, to keep rabbits indoor. Plus also, that means that they're a big part of the family and they get daily attention, which they really crave and desire and it keeps them um, much more calmer and happier. And we don't want them forgotten about. And unfortunately, a lot of rabbits that live outside are forgotten about. Um, so having them indoors be part of the family just like all your other pets is extremely critical to their well-being both mentally and physically. So there's a couple different setups that you can do for your rabbit. One of course is the standard cage and as you can see this is a pretty good size cage. We strongly recommend that you get the biggest cage possible and what you really want to look for is that it has a flat bottom like this one does. This has a flat, hard plastic bottom. You don't want your rabbit living on wire because that actually can cause a lot of damage to their feet. There's a disease called bumblefoot that they can get if they're living on wire all their lives. They can also get toes caught in them. They can get nails to torn off of them uh, from the wires. So you definitely don't want that. So again, you want to look for as big a cage as possible and one that has a flat bottom like this one. And ideally, if you can get one that has a top loading as well, because if you have this on the ground or on a shorter table, it's much easier to reach in from the top and get your rabbit. So you'll want to get a cage as big as possible. Also keep in mind that inside this cage is going to be a variety of things that your rabbit's going to need. So that's one option. And these cages come on stands or you can put them on the table. You can also set them on the floor. Of course, keep in mind if you have other pets, you want to make sure that the other pets aren't coming up and bothering your bunny in the cage. Another setup is the X-Pen setup. And we have a couple set up here in this room with a variety of things in them. This is just one X-Pen. This is um, a fine size for most rabbits of any size. Uh, you, they come in different heights, but this is usually a pretty standard height for a rabbit. And you can set them up any way, which is nice. They fold in different ways, so you can put them in a corner. You can make them lengthwise, if that's better for your room. Um, so this is a good size, as I said, for one rabbit, possibly two small ones. If you have two bigger rabbits, like Nikki and Emerson, um, then you can actually set up two X-Pens, or you can get two and make it kind of like one and a half. And as you can see, these two rabbits have plenty of room to run around, which is great. Um, you know, keep in mind that your rabbits, for the most part, if you have them in an X-Pen or a cage, are in there pretty much all day and all night. So you want to have as much room as possible, just as if you have, you know, a big a yard as you can for your dog or a big, of, a big house for your cat. Rabbits definitely need as much room as possible, again, to run around, to hop, to stretch out, uh, et cetera. And again, you're going to have a variety of things in their cage, which we'll talk about in just a minute. A third option that a lot of people like to do is to have their rabbits loose in the house. And this can very easily be done. Um, you can, you know, if there are certain rooms in the house that you don't want your rabbit to go into, you can get baby gates or you can get X-Pens and put them across doorways. But rabbits, because they are litter box trained, can be very easily um, adjusted to living loosely in the house. Obviously, you want to bunny proof the house and make sure that wires aren't exposed. And there's different resources to find out how to bunny proof your house. But you want to make sure wires aren't exposed. Rabbits are chewers, so if you've got a lot of really nice furniture, you might want to think twice about that. Keep in mind that wherever you have your rabbit, if it's in an X-Pen or a cage, you, you've got to get it out for about two to three hours to really exercise. Just as much as you take your dog out to run off leash or for long walks, or you get your cat you know, actively running down the hallway, playing with toys, etc., you've got to do that with rabbits as well. It's imperative because they need to be able to stretch their muscles. They need to 
get out and run around and hop and do what we call bunny binkies, which is when they jump straight up in the air. But they need all that exercise to process all of their food, et cetera. So it's really important. And obviously, it's for mental stimulation as well because, you know, living in a cage or an x can get a little boring at times. So they need to get out and experience some freedom. And some people will use a long hallway to do that. Um, some people will put them in a different room that they're just not used to being in so they can run around and explore, whatever works best. But again, any setup, they've really got to get out for about two to three hours a day. So that's really important to keep that in mind. So as far as toys and other supplies, when you first get your rabbit, like I said, you'll need an X-Pen or two of them, hopefully, and a cage. And then you'll definitely need a litter pan. Uh, this is a small litter pan that'll be good for like a dwarf rabbit or a very small rabbit. Um, we've got some bigger rabbits here and they need a little bit bigger litter pan. Um, the two rabbits over here have what's called a high back litter pan, which is a little bit raised in the back. So there's a wide variety. Um, two rabbits like this would either need two good sized litter pans or a really, really big one. Um, whatever works best for your size rabbit is what you're going to need. So really get the right size litter pan so that they have plenty of room to go in there and if you want to put hay in there as well, there's space for that. And then as far as litter that you can use, um, here at Marin Humane Society, we recommend Critter Country. Uh, but there's several varieties of litter out there that are non-toxic, that are safe for the environment, etc. And this is a good brand because it helps absorb odor. And as far as diet goes for rabbits, ideally what they should have is about 85 to 90 percent hay. And we're talking Timothy hay or oat grass hay. And what you want to get is the long hay because they have teeth back here that have to be ground down on a daily basis. So it's really important to get the long strands of Timothy hay or oat hay. And they need that for digestion and um, that is the main part of their diet. What's nice about these bags is that it's compact so it really lasts a long time. And a lot of people unfortunately overfeed pellets for rabbits. Pellets are basically like candy for rabbits. This size bag will last quite a long time because most rabbits only need about two to three tablespoons of pellets a day. So you can keep that in the refrigerator in that bag or in a Tupperware container to keep it a little bit fresher. And then as far as vegetables, they do need a wide variety of vegetables to help keep them healthy. And what we try to tell people is to look at the size of their head and give about that much of a handful of vegetables. Ideally, they would get about three different kinds of veggies a day. Some great vegetables are cilantro, parsley, regular, regular parsley or Italian parsley. Dandelion greens are excellent. They're nice and long. Again, it helps keep their back teeth ground down properly. They can have Brussels sprouts, they can have broccoli. There's a wide variety of vegetables that you can give them. And a lot of people like to give them fruit, which is fine, except it should be given just about once a week in a very, very small piece. Again, it's like candy to them. So if you give them too much fruit, they're just gonna wanna eat that and forget everything else. <laughs> so it's very important just to give them a little bit of fruit once a week.